Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are continuing our playthrough of The Ghosts Betwixt. We have just finished out this room. We took down a couple lackeys, and we're going to be moving on. We have our objective A, find the staircase. So we're looking for 8A inside our map token deck here to continue on with our adventure. Now, there's a couple of things I want to mention before we start. Number one is this person right here. In our last video, I wasn't exactly sure if I was playing uh, her correctly when I was moving her towards Maddox. We had Maddox down in this area, and we had Bill over here. I know this is a simplified version, but I just want to demonstrate. And I wasn't sure she would go and attack Bill because it would take her more movement points to reach Maddox. But it wouldn't have mattered. She would have actually gone over and conked him on the head because she still could have got to Maddox the next turn. So she would have actually gone and attacked her him on the way to getting Maddox. So I just wanted to clear that up. That was my mistake. I, she should have attacked Bill in the last video. The next one is I want to talk about these monster trophy cards. I picked one of these up in the drop deck. And during this prototype playthrough, these really don't do anything. But actually, they're a really powerful card. What these trophies are going to do is they're going to unlock a whole small deck full of items and abilities and things that you're going to be able to put into this equipment deck. I guess not abilities, but more items and equipment. And you'll be able to get those items and equipment out of here based on if you're able to get one of these trophy cards, you can unlock that deck and add it to your equipment deck, making your equipment deck have more cards and gain more new and more powerful cards based on what trophies you're able to uncover. I hope that made sense. <laughs> all right, so with that out of the way, we're all set to continue. We're gonna move into our next room and do our draw phase, or sorry, our exploration phase, and then we're gonna go into our drawing phase. Do you think our family members are going to be able to find the staircase? And even, will they be able to save Richie? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. So we're going to go ahead and draw our next map token. Now this token right here, this is that door to the basement, but we couldn't open it. We, according to our objectives, we're just supposed to find the staircase now. So we're going to see what map token we get. 5A. All right, I'm going to go pull 5A. 5A is apparently the master bedroom, or maybe not the master bedroom, but it's some kind of bedroom. We're going to put it right here up it fits. Yes, it does. Perfect. All right, that fit there. Now we're going to have to draw three fate tokens. So we're going to draw one, two, three, and we'll figure out which ones we get. Oh, we got an ambush token. What this token means is if we were to draw an enemy before or after we draw an ambush token, they're actually going to spawn behind us back here and come after us. That's kind of what the ambush token symbolizes. So let's go ahead and see what our next token is. If it's an enemy, we're going to get ambushed. Oh, it's not. It's just a little trap. All right. So sadly, we can't get ambushed by traps. <laughs> and our third token is... Oh, it's a door. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our door over here. I know you can't see it because the map's actually too far away. So I'm going to adjust the camera angle so we can get into the next room. So the only thing we have to do in this room, since we actually didn't get any enemies, is we do have to place this trap. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six on that axis. It's on a three. One, two, three. And then also we're going to roll our D8. Seven. Way up here. So Maddox is standing on a trap. Now it's okay to stand on traps. You just can't be pushed into a trap or it's going to trigger. So we've gone ahead and explored this room. We've spawned this room, and since there aren't any monsters, there's no attacking phase or anything. So we're gonna go again right into another drawing phase. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Even though we know our door to the basement is down here, we're actually just gonna go ahead and get rid of that because I don't know if I'm really gonna be going back that way. We're gonna see how this unfolds. So we're gonna draw our next map tile and see what we get. Oh, we got 8A. That's the one we're looking for. Let's go get that tile.
Right, so I have our tile here. It's the one with the staircase that they're talking about. I'm gonna just put it there for right now because I wanna go ahead and look at our objective so I do this right because I didn't do the last one right exactly. So it says, during the draw phase, draw 8A, place map tile with the staircase orientated opposite the family members. Draw three fate tokens as normal for map tile 8A. However, only spawn treasure tokens and trap tokens and discard the rest. Add door standee to new doorway. And then during the explore phase, place each family member in the first row of 8A adjacent to the doorway from which you entered. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And again, I'm gonna have to adjust the camera to get this map into play. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a door over here. So you're not really gonna see it anymore because it's gonna turn, but we do have to draw three fate tokens. And it says that we have to place a few of them, but not all of them. So our first token is, oh, it's a monster. Okay, so it says not to spawn monsters, discard that token. Next one is a trap. So we're gonna go ahead and spawn traps. And our last one is, oh, it's a treasure. All right, we can spawn treasures. So we're gonna go ahead and spawn our trap first. And our trap is gonna be on six, which is over here, and then what other number? Five, so it's way up there in the corner, hiding out. All right, and our treasure token's at six, oh, same thing here, and four, one, two, three, four, so it's on this thing, I'm just gonna move it out one over to there. All right, we've gone ahead and done that, we're gonna discard this token. Now we're gonna go ahead and place our family members adjacent to this door on the first row here, just like that. So we're all set, except these two are facing the wrong way. I think I want them facing the enemy, not facing the wall. This isn't the Blair Witch Project. They don't need to be facing walls. All right, so now that we've done that, it says, yep, we've done everything. Let's get, now it's gonna say complete. So we're gonna flip it over and it says, objective complete. Spawn Eustace Wade Benert. Oh, fantastic. In a random space adjacent to the staircase. All right, so let's go find him. So here's our standee. If you thought that late rolling pin lady was something, check that guy out. So he's gonna spawn randomly in one of those four areas. So we're gonna start one over here. One, two, he is right there next to that bush. Now that we've gone ahead and spawned him, let's continue on down. It says, read story one dash four. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. But first, let's take a look at his monster card. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Oh, yep, yeah, what do you know, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what this guy can do. All right, he rolls a blue dice and a dark yellow dice for damage. Oh, that's no good. He's got a brown die for defense, which is the best he can get. He has five speed, only one agility again, so we only have to hit him once. Ten ex hit points, ten experience points. You get four bucks if I beat him. How about that, huh? And he also gets a humanish weapon. So let's go ahead and grab him a humanish weapon. I'm going to mix these cards up a little bit. We're just going to draw one off the top. We're going to take that one right there. Let's see what he gets. Hopefully it's something not too bad. We got a slingshot. Oh no, he's gonna have ranged attacks. He gets to roll a light green die and he can cause, was that blind? Blind one. All right, so he gets that humanish weapon. That's absolutely terrible. He's also got a couple powers. Let's look at those. First it says, scratches himself, growls and eats bone shaped cookies. Otherwise, a normal fella. The following only activates if no hits are rolled. Sikkim, random guard dog within range, immediately attacks its target or whistle. Spawn a guard dog? Oh, that's horrible. All right, so that only happens though if he does not roll any hits. I'm also gonna give him 10 hit points and we also have to figure out who he's attacking. So we're gonna mix these tokens up. We're gonna go ahead and draw one. We'll draw this one right here because it wanted to be drawn. Oh no, poor Maddox is being attacked by Cousin Eustace. So we're gonna put our targeting token right there. And now we're gonna go ahead and read Story 1-4. Story 1-4. Well, I'll be. These ears haven't deceived me. We do have a couple of folks lost in our humble haunted house. An imposing sweaty man in a white tank top and fogged over glasses slowly descends the staircase. He scratches his ear. Did y'all accidentally take a left out of the swamp room? No worry, happens all the time. We still needin' to fix that exit. Follow me, kind folk, and I'll get you safely back on the road. Let me first grab a couple of free passes for you next time. We're here for our son, Joan cried. We know he's downstairs. Open the door now. He takes a bite out of a crunchy, bone-shaped cookie. 
Sweet sugar lips, why so gloom? Such a gorgeous night for a gorgeous lady, I might add. The man wipes his brow and removes his glasses. Sure, we can go down there. Me and my friends here will show you around. The man whistles. Dual pit bulls descend the stairs behind him. All three begin to growl. Name's Eustace Wade Benert, my lady, and I'll be the last gentleman of the fine Midwest you've the pleasure to meet. Maybe I should just read this with my own accent because I'm actually from the Midwest, so this is actually the accent you're normally supposed to hear. All right, so we're going to continue on. Of course, I'm from the city, so I probably don't have the accent that everybody else does. Let's see here. It says, spawn two guard dogs in random spaces adjacent to the staircase. All right, so we're going to go grab two dogs. So we're going to spawn our first dog. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, he's over here. And our second dog, he's going to spawn one right here. All right, so he's not facing that way. He's facing this way. And of course, we have to figure out who they're going to be targeting. So guard dog number one is going to be targeting... Maddox, so everybody's going after Maddox. And guard dog number two is going after Joan. All right, so we're going to go put those out. So we're going to put our guard dog card out, and we're going to put Jones here. We're also going to put Maddox right there because that's who they're targeting. Now, they each get four hit points. I'm going to put those out there as well. There's four for that guard dog and four for this guard dog. Now, they each get a beastly weapon. So let's go ahead and shuffle these up a little bit. We're just going to grab the top ones. There we go, that one and that one. All right, our first one gets this card. What's that? Oh, it's that tooth again. Oh, no, sorry. It's the jagged nail. So he gets to roll an extra green die. And our second dog is going to get, what's this? Matted fur. Oh, it gets an extra tan defense dice. Yuck. And it also rolls an extra light green die. So we're going to put that one down here. I'm going to move this dog over a little bit so I have some room for these cards. All right, there we go. Card right there. Hit points up here. Joan right there. Oh, I'm kind of making a mess, but we'll get this figured out. Here we go. And boom. Now we get to go into our pre-combat phase, so we each get to do an action. But before we do that, let me finish reading our objective card. I forgot about these things. I need to spawn two large rat traps. And on top of that, then number fight, then begin the fighting phase. Characters may move into previous map tile. Okay, that's going to be kind of helpful. If I need to go backwards, I can, but I do have to spawn two large rat traps. So apparently I found one rat, large rat trap. The other one must still probably be in our fate token pool here. But since this is kind of our last little thing, I think I'm just going to go ahead and find it. Well, I can't find one. We got one back here. We're just going to leave it there. But and we've spawned one here. I think it's because we only have three and this happened to all be spawned. So I'm actually going to use a bear trap as well. We're just going to remember they're all rat traps. All right, so let's go ahead and spawn these. Our first one is going to be on three and three. Oh, I killed the dog. One, two, three, one, two, three, right there, right in the middle. We got a four and two right here. Wow, look at all these traps all over the place. Traps everywhere. Okay, I got to try to figure out a way to get them onto those traps. Now our fighting begins, and we're going to go do our pre-combat phase. Joan really doesn't have much she could do. She could grab another die, or she could attempt to heal Maddox, who's only down one hit point, but she's about to get just blasted. I think we're going to take the die. My goal is to hopefully get somebody to hit one of those traps. Now, sadly for Maddox, I really wish I could have used the Fireworks Tinkerer, but I think he needs defense, or this could get really bad. All right, Bill, he's going to grab an attack die as well. And of course, I'm an absolute moron. If I would have actually set these guys up right, I would have put him in between Maddox and Evelyn. So if either of them would have gotten targeted, I could have used this card on them. But instead, I put him in an actually bad place. Actually, no, I don't think we're going to do that. Let's just move him. And we're going to go ahead and give Evelyn an attack die. I think that's our best bet because she could probably use this Teenage Rager and go ahead and hit somebody with it. All right, I'm going to actually do something different with Joan. I'm going to move that marker back down to plus one. And we're going to go ahead and have her actually move her five speed. I have a plan. She's going to move one, two, three, four, five up to here and face this dog. And she's going to try to knock it into this trap. I think that's going to be our best bet. And he is also going to move. I think he's going to move right here. Again, I've got a plan. It might not be a very good one, but it's a plan. No, it's not. It's a terrible plan. That's not a very good spot for him. Okay, new plan. I lied. She's the one moving here. He's the one moving here. The reason I'm doing this is my, my, my tactic plan is, is he's going to be able to hit this dog into this trap. That's my, that's my goal. Then the 
that means he's going to activate next and he's going to do everything in his power to get to him. Dio he has a ranged weapon, so he's going to stop over here somewhere, nah, which I'm not actually sure where he's going to stop until I move him. So I'm not going to be able to do anything with Joan. But then if I have Evelyn go next, this dog's going to come and attack her. And if I can again get him to her to stumble him into another trap, I'm a big fan of these traps. We're going to try to use as many traps as we can. Let's see how I do. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up too badly, but I'm sure there's people out there thinking, why did you do that? So our first activation is going to be with dear old dad. Bill here is going to hit this dog. So Bill is going to grab a light green die, a light green die, another light green die, and he's also going to grab his light orange die. And of course the dog we're attacking is dog number one. Now dog number one does not have the matted fur, so he just gets the one tan defense dice. And let's see how this goes. All right, come on dear old dad, let's do something. Oh, dear old dad at least did something. The dog didn't do anything. He did three damage to the dog. I was really hoping for a symbol that would allow him to stumble the dog, but we didn't get that. So the dog has one agility, so we've gone ahead and hit the dog, and we did three damage. So our first dog has taken three damage. I kind of wish I would have got that stumble. It would have moved it into the trap, and it would have died. Now we have to go on to Eustace because he is the first person to activate in the enemies. He's got a speed value of five. Now he also has a range of three plus his accuracy and it doesn't show me anywhere for accuracy. So he's got a three range. So he's gonna move in and try to shoot him with his range weapon. So he's gonna go one, two, and then one, two, three. I think that's all he needs to do in order to go ahead and hit Maddox. Now of course Eustace gets a green die, he gets this blue die, and he also gets a dark yellow die. Now we do have Maddox. Maddox gets a tan die and he also gets an extra tan die because he was able to give himself a defensive stance. We can't forget he gets a light green die for his slingshot. So now we're going to go ahead and roll all our dice. Oh no, we got a lot of hits. Look at that. Actually, hits are good. If he wouldn't have gotten any hits, his powers would have activated. He got hits. Now let's look at this. Check this out. He got two damage and I got two defense. So I blocked his attack completely. This is amazing. So no matter how many hits you have, you just hit him once. And then I did two damage. He did two damage to me, but both of my defenses block his attack, his damage coming in. Oh, way to go, Maddox. So again, my plans aren't going exactly as I was hoping. I was hoping that this dog would be dead. And then I was planning on having her shoot this guy with all her might. But sadly, I need to move her up so that she can shoot at this dog without getting anything blocking her path here. I think that's okay from there, but one, two, uh, uh. you know what? I'm just going to have her go ahead and shoot that guy. I think that's my best bet. These dogs are going to come down and attack, or I could move her to go attack up here and try to push him into this trap. You know, I, I said I was going to be a big fan of traps this turn. Maybe that's the way to go. Of course, that means Joan's going to get attacked from the back by that dog. Okay, I got it. Joan's going to, or not Joan, sorry. Evelyn's going to move to there. That's her plan. She's going to move here, and she's going to shoot that dog. All right, she's going to gain a light green die, a light yellow die, a green die, and also a light blue die. And that dog, sadly, is that one that has the... No, it doesn't have the fur. I lied. It only is going to get one brown defense die. It's dog number two that has the brown de, or the thick fur. So we're going to go ahead and take him out. Come on, Evelyn, let's take this dog out. Oh, Evelyn, you didn't take the dog out. You got a lot of diamonds. She activated about every power on her slingshot, but sadly she didn't actually hit. So she doesn't do anything to that dog. So our first dog is going to attempt to attack Maddox. He's right here. So he's going to come down one, two, three, four, right here and attack Maddox. Now, the interesting thing is dog number two wants to attack Joan and she's not going to be able to, that dog can't get to him. So I believe then it would do one of those attack along the way and it would either be Evelyn or Maddox. I believe I have to do it randomly to decide who he's going to attack. But first, let's take care of that dog. And that dog gets a green, a light yellow, and a light blue die. Now Maddox only gets one tan defense die because you only get to use that extra added bonus dice once during your turn. So since he's already used it when he attacked, he doesn't get to use it for this attack at all. So we're going to roll these dice and see what happens. All right, let's hope this dog doesn't do very well. Oh, this dog did fantastic. Oh, this dog is terrible. <laughs> All right, so I have a one agility. So the dog hit me, and it hit me for three damage. That's ridiculous. So Maddox got walloped for three, so he's down to two health. Now it's dog number two's turn. We gotta figure out what to do with him. He's gonna go one, two, three. 
three and he could attack her or go four or five and attack him because she he can't get to her, but he would be equidistant to getting to her depending on where he was standing. So we're gonna roll a die. Even, it attacks Evelyn. Odd, it attacks Maddox. I'm hoping for even. Okay, good. So it's gonna stand right here and attack Evelyn. And that dog's gonna gain a light green die. It's also gonna gain a light blue die and a light yellow die. And she gets a white die to roll, not a tan die like everybody else. All right, let's hope this dog doesn't do as well as that last dog. Oh, look again. She is like the, I should just have everybody attack her. <laughs> she seems to dodge everything. It didn't matter. This dog actually didn't hit at all. And it would only done one damage, but with the X, that means the dog would flat out have missed, even if it would have got 162 successes. So Joan's going to go next. I think, sadly, it's going to be kind of a wasted move. She's going to attack this dog. But before she makes an attack, I'm going to have her use her milk, which states, Roll a light orange die and gain HP to self or adjacent family member. Yeah, you're right. We're going to use it on Maddox, who's right up here. So we're going to roll our light orange die and see how much health he gets. He got four! Yes! So according to my math, four plus two is six. That's his max hit points. Now we're going to go ahead and discard this card into the items deck. And now we're going to continue into Joan's turn. So I guess it's true that milk really does the body good. All right, we're going to grab a green die, a dark yellow die, a light green die, and a light green die. Yes, my bad jokes are going to continue. Okay, this is what I get to attack him with. Now he gets to defend himself with one brown, or sorry, tan defense dice. So let's go see how this goes. I'm going to take that down one. All right, let's get him. All right, let's see if Joan can take out this dog. Joan was able to barely take out this dog. If we look at our dice, everything missed except for one hit and two damage. And that's all we need. So I only need to do one, but I did two, which is enough. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our beastly ability there. We're gonna remove our targeting token and we're gonna remove our standee from our, the board and put it on Joan's card. And of course, putting it there reminds me to give myself an extra attack die next turn. So the only person left is Maddox and we're gonna start with him. He's gonna make a bottle rocket. So Maddox is gonna use one of his family points to create a bottle rocket. It says right here, add one firework to bottle rockets, max one. Now it's max two from what I've learned, but we're gonna go ahead and put that right there. And then with our second action, I think now we're gonna go ahead and make an attack, but we're not gonna use the bottle rocket. We're gonna save that. We're gonna use our crude slingshot and gain two green dice. And he's also gonna get a light green die for his actual slingshot, which is up here in the corner. Now he rolls a dark yellow damage die because he has accuracy too. And he's gonna shoot that dog that's been plaguing Joan's existence. Now, of course, that's the dog that gains two tan defense dice. All right, let's see how Maddox does against that dog. Oh, he did absolutely terrible. Maybe I should have shot the bottle rocket. He didn't get any hits. So none of these are going to activate. He would have done two damage. It would have blocked one, but he didn't hit at all. We're entering into our second round. So I have to go ahead and roll my die to see if any of us are going to take a random damage. Oh no, one of us does. Oh, who is it going to be? One, two, three, four. Oh, this is going to be bad. So roll our die. One, Maddox. Oh, Maddox, I think he's going to go ahead and take a family point worth of damage because he has the orange juice that he can get him back if he needs him. I just don't want him taking any more health damage because this guy's going to be coming after him. Speaking of that guy, we need to maybe worry about him now. I got a plan. Usually they're not that great. <laughs> Let's see how this one does. We're going to move uh, Bill down here. He's going to pretty much bash this guy in the back with a golf club, hopefully pushing him into this trap. If he's able to do that, he's going to go next and attack Maddox. Not much I can do about it. But then at least if Joan is here, he can heal him if, if, she, if he needs to get healed after he gets attacked by this guy. All right, so we're going to hit him and see what happens. Now, of course, Dad gets a light green die, another light green die, and a dark orange die because he's attacking him in the back. Now, of course, Eustace gets one of these brown defense dice, not digging the brown defense dice. So let's hope we hit him and we can get him to stumble into that trap. Now, I don't have a lot of extra dice, so this, I'm really banking on a lot here. All right, come on, let's see how Bill does. Bill hit him, okay, he did three damage. Sadly, he didn't push him into the trap, which I was hoping for. But interestingly, he is gonna switch his target to Bill. So let's go ahead and do three damage and switch that target. 
So Cousin Eustace here is going to go ahead and take three damage, which means he is down to seven. So we're doing pretty good. We're going to change his target to Bill, and that means it's going to be his turn next. And he's going to probably move away from Bill because he's got a ranged weapon. So he's going to try to get as far away from him and still be able to hit him and not take any obstruction penalties. So he's going to actually move one, two, three down here, turning and firing one, two, three. Oh, no, he has to be up one. There we go, one, two, and I think he's going to go over here because I don't think he wants to be next to that trap. He's not that dumb. All right, we're going to go ahead and shoot this guy. So he gets a blue, a dark yellow, and a light green. Now, of course, Bill, being the wonderful defense guy that he is, he actually gets a brown defense dice, which is pretty good. All right, let's see how this goes. Hopefully, Dad can hold up. Oh, no, okay. So he hit, so that means none of his other abilities are going to fire on his character card, but let's grab his card. So here is Cousin E. Eustace. Cousin E. Eustace hit me. I have one agility. Sadly, Dad's defense dice didn't do anything. I'm going to take two damage from the attack, but he's got two stars. Uh, sorry, diamonds. But they do say that the following only activate if no hits are rolled. But there was a hit. So since those don't activate, he does have his slingshot, which on the bottom here states one Diamond equals blind one. So sadly, dad's going to suffer blind one. So since dad took two damage, I'm going to go ahead and put him down to eight. Now he also is going to suffer blind one. What that means is when he goes and makes his next attack, yeah, I'm going to put it right on his face, he's blind. He's going to roll an extra d6. And on a one or two, the attack automatically fails. Now at the end of that activation, he's going to go ahead and remove his blind token because the conditions will tick down each time that it's used. So for example, if I was blind two, for the next two attacks, he'd have to do it. But since it's only blind one, I only have to do it for one. So Eustace has gone ahead and made his presence felt. I'm going to activate Joan now. And since Joan doesn't have to heal Maddox, she's going to go one, two, three, four back here and hit this guard dog in the back and hopefully push him into that trap. And since she's a guard dog killing machine, she gets a light green die, another green die, a light green die, and since she's attacking from the back, she gets to roll a light orange die. Now, of course, that's our super dog that has two tan defense dice. So let's go ahead and hopefully hit this guy without him getting too much here. I'm gonna lower that token down one. So let's roll it up and see how Joan does. Come on, Joan. Joan did it! Oh, yes! All right, Joan actually doesn't even have to worry about using the push. All right, Joan hit the dog and did three damage. And if we look at our baseball bat here, it shows that, what was this one? I think it was a hit. I don't remember what that was, but it doesn't matter. I hit him, he had one agility, I hit him. He's going to switch targets to Joan, doesn't matter. He's going to take three damage, and I can do both damage one and stumble one if I want. But I'll just do the one damage and save the trap for hopefully hitting somebody else into it. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe E. Eustace? <laughs> he likes traps. Let's put him in the trap. So Joan has gone ahead and done four damage to our dogs, killing the dogs. They're dead. Both of these dogs have been killed. And actually, they're both killed by Joan. So this beastly thing's going to go back over here. I put the monster back on there. I'm going to put her token back down here. All we have to worry about is E. Eustace now. And he's got seven health left and is attacking Bill. I'm going to go ahead and move. Oh, he's over here. I'm going to move his standee onto Jones. So again, I'm able to remind myself to grab a this token up one. Now we have our two kids left, and that's it. And I think we're just going to go ahead, and they're both going to go ahead and shoot this guy. We're going to start one, two, three, four with our teenage rager. Evelyn, our teenage rager, is going to go ahead and grab a light blue die, a green die, two light yellow dies, and she's also going to grab a light green die. And I'm going to spend one of my family points to gain that extra light yellow die by using her Teenage Rager power. Roll damage dice twice. Keep the better roll. That's awesome. Now, of course, Eustace is going to get that brown defense dice. So Evelyn gets an absolute mountain of dice to go ahead and hit this guy. Let's see what she... Oh, one of these bounced out of the thing. i got to roll it again. Oh, that's a really good roll. All right, so I hit him. Oh, no, look at this. Oh, I didn't hit him. He... He got the best he possibly could with this die. So there's the dodge. It gets rid of my attack. Neither of my damage dice are going to hit. I don't have any other hits to actually do any damage to this guy. Wow. What looked to be absolutely awesome got absolutely thwar thwarted by our dodge there. Sadly, that attack was not the greatest. Maddox is going to go next. And those were both her actions. She used her power and she attacked. So Maddox is going to go next and it's bottle rocket time. And I just realized I made a mistake. 
I used that weapon when I attacked last time, it should have been this green die down here, not the light green die. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference, but I just want you to be aware I used the wrong die. That's actually in my inventory, and so I can't actually obviously use it. This is the one that's equipped in my hand. We're going to fire a bottle rocket, though. We're going to remove that token. So Maddox gets a green die, a light blue die, a light green die, and he also gets his dark yellow die. And of course, our evil <laughs> big giant guy gets his brown die. Ugh, that one just crippled us last time. Come on, Bottle Rock. Don't fail me now. Let's get him. Oh, good. I hit him. Oh, no. He's going to switch his target to me. <laughs> That's no good. All right. Let's see how this all goes. All right. So he got a switch target token. I hit him. And if you look at our Bottle Rocket card, it shows right here that a Eustace has one agility, so one hit is enough to hit him. I've done two damage. I get an extra one because of my bottle rocket. Now, I get to do pierce one, which ignores defense. He didn't roll any defense, so I'm not worried about that. And I did forget to tell you, this thing actually randomly fires at a person, but there's only one guy out there, so that's why I waited till the dogs were dead before I fired this. So I'm actually going to do three damage to a Eustace. So I did three damage. He's down to four. We're so close. We could probably get him in one shot if we get really lucky. But he's changing his target to Maddox. And since he changed his tar target to Maddox, <laughs> Maddox gets to choose one more action. And since it's his second action, he can choose to take a defensive or offensive stance. He's going to take a defensive stance. And that's, again, the end of this round. So we're going to go ahead and roll our die and see what happens to us. Two. Nothing. Thank goodness. Our next attack is going to be done with, I almost might just use him again. He could get a bottle rocket and fire it right over at this guy again. I really like those bottle rockets. <laughs> I'm digging them. All right, let's do that. So with his last family point, he's going to go ahead. Oh, I forgot. If I activate him, he loses this defense die. Oh, that's no good. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. I should have gave him an offensive die, again, failing miserably in my tactics. We're going to go ahead then and fire our bottle rocket. So he's again going to grab his dark yellow die, a light green die, a light blue die, a green die, and of course a use, you, you, a use this, oh, I'm even pronouncing that right. He gets this brown die. All right, let's hopefully take this guy down. All right, Maddox, let's see how you do. Maddox did not do anything. <laughs> Maddox would have done three damage, but he didn't get any hits at all. Oh, Maddox, that bottle rocket failed. And of course, now it's a Eustace's turn, and he's going to turn and fire one, two, three. He needs to move up one to fire. He's going to move down here so it can't get pushed into a trap. He's not that dumb. One, two, three. He's going to fire at him. I'm sorry all the standees are kind of facing the wrong direction. Maybe I'll turn them a little bit so you can see at least who everybody is, though I think you can figure it out by the colors by now. So Eustace gets a light green die. He also gets a dark blue die, a dark yellow die, and Maddox gets his tan defense dice. Eustace, I'm not afraid of you. Oh, I probably should be. Oh, no. Okay, so he took two damage. He has three hits, and I have a dodge, so it gets rid of one. But he still has enough hits to do damage, so he did two damage to Maddox. So that's going to bring Maddox again down to four damage. He took two, and he had six. The only good thing about him continuously hitting our guys is he's not summoning more dogs with his whistle power, thank goodness. All right, we're going to move into... I, I think Joan is going to go next. He's gonna, she's going to go one two, three, four, and she's going to get behind him. I'm going to attempt to move him here, and then hopefully Daddy can move him into one of the, into this trap right here or something. That's my plan. So Joan's going to grab a green die, another light, or sorry, a light green die, a light green die, a green die up here, and she's also going to get this light orange die because, again, she's attacking from the back, and Eustace gets a brown die. So we got all these dice again to roll. Hopefully we can do enough to maybe take this guy out or at least really hurt him. All right, Joan, come on, let's do it. Oh, I got some hits. All right, let's see how much damage I did. I did three. Oh, I think we got him. Oh, this is going to be awesome. All right, we're going to look at our little bat here. And I think, okay, we're going to remove this. This is our switch target die. I'm not too worried about that. So we, he has one agility, so we hit him. We can remove these dice. I did three damage with my dice. And look at that. This one diamond is going to give me the one damage I need. So that's four damage. He only has four left. That's enough to take out Eustace. Wow, I can barely even say his name. So Joan, again, just takes another character out. She is like just the killing machine. Wow, when she really wants to save her son, she really goes all out. So we've gone ahead and destroyed Eustace. 
we're gonna put him back there put our token down here and check it out we can get this treasure these traps are still there wow we did fantastic but let's look at our objective card so our objective card is to defeat all monsters and we were complete so let's go ahead and turn it over it says mission complete read one dash five so let's do that first story one dash five each family member looks on in disbelief remaining motionless other than their rapid heavy breathing joan is the first to move well <laughs> she did do the most damage she quickly searches the unconscious heavily perspired man for a key but finds nothing she wipes her hand off before giving the limp body one last kick to the kidney region. They take a few seconds to compose themselves before racing up the dimly lit musty stairs. Mission complete. Now we can continue on with our card here and it says, draw twice from the brown equipment deck. After we do that, you may continue exploring if map tokens and fate tokens remain. The chapter may only end during an exploration exploring phase. Gain bonus XP and distribute individually among the family members. Each remaining hit point, you gain an extra HP and each remaining family point, an extra two HP. Wow, well, poor Maddox doesn't get too many extra bonus experience points for firing all those bottle rockets. He has no family points left. All right, read next step in mission guide. So that is the end of our mission here. We only have one mission in the prototype. I don't have any other missions, so I don't know where this is gonna take us. I do know that these aren't gonna be the only people you fight. There's a big long campaign that takes place. So you're not just gonna be fighting guard dogs and ferrets. There's a lot of really fun things that are going on in this game. I like the uh, way that monsters can change their target mechanic. I think that's really cool. I really like the art. I like how this is, how it like, has that comic booky feel. I know I've mentioned that before. I do like the dice system where it's got the D6s, but each D6 does something a little bit different. So it's not always the same type of dice you're rolling over and over. And one of the main points is this is strategic enough for somebody like me that can really get my hands into, but also it has is a very like family friendly game since it is ages 10 up that a whole family can kind of sit down and really enjoy the game together and now that we've completely played through this entire mission the last thing i want to mention is fp actually means focus point <laughs> i've been calling them family points and actually to tell you the truth i think that's a good name for it but of course i don't know how the whole game is going to go i don't know if you're always going to be using the same family so family points would probably be a pointless term for them Focus points is probably a better generic term that can be used for any kind of character that comes into this play. Well, that's going to be it for this playthrough. This prototype is a lot of fun to play through. I'm really excited for when this game hits Kickstarter and gets going. And don't forget, during the Kickstarter, I'm going to have the link right up here. So you can go check it out there. And if you're looking for any information about this game, even before or after the Kickstarter, you can always check the comments below. I put a link to Board Game Geek and also to the website for this game itself. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dustin Freund for letting me get a copy of this prototype so I could play it for everybody on my channel and anybody else that's looking into this game. Please feel free to put anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. As usual, it's so much fun to hear what people think about all these new things coming out. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see what's going to be coming next, then I need you to meet me at the table.